Because I just want us to be intentional this morning. Because there's a lingering glory. And I don't want to miss an opportunity. Because the truth be told, like, it's all about him. <laughs> we don't have to have a word. And we're on our face to the floor, worshiping him. I'm okay. Amen. But during worship, I, I, I begin to see ladders being extended from heaven. And it's like the ladders were shooting down from heaven. And as these ladders began to flow down, they became telescopes. And I could see inside the telescope the different beauties and the different colors of the, of the, of the glory of God that was on the ladder. And I, I, I can't, I'm not going to try to explain it because I, I don't have an explanation for it. But I believe it's an invitation from the Lord this morning about stepping into a greater glory with the Father. And he wants to magnify his glory to the body, to the bride this morning. And see, a lot of times what happens is we get our mind so wrapped up and everything that's going on and we begin to analyze things and like, see, some of y'all just might have even got wrapped up on the fact that I saw a ladder from heaven. Like, oh yeah, right, whatever. And you missed the whole thing already. And we need to get out of our, our, our natural mind and get into the Father's heart to begin to see what He sees. Because see, in the glory, you can see with your eyes shut. So I asked Peter if he would sing a song, worship a song that I know that was birthed in a place of, of the glory. We were in Birmingham, Alabama. I'll never forget it. We were in Birmingham, Alabama. And we used to do something called worship in the word. And Peter would go into this humongous building. The lights are off. And he would just worship his face off. And if somebody came in, they came in great. But if not, it was an audience of one. And I remember one time, I, he, he was, it was an afternoon and I walked in and he was singing this song that was birthed prophetically at that moment. And as soon as I walked into the sanctuary of the, the building. I stepped into an encounter with the Lord. And the only way I can explain it is I stepped onto like a glory cloud. And I began to feel the floor. <sighs> to the point where it, it startled me. And I almost pulled myself out. But there's something about agreeing with heaven. So I want him to sing and whatever comes out because he has sung this and worshiped this song to the Lord all over the nation. And every time, it's something different. Every time. But see, I want you to position yourself because the, the message this morning that I'm going to share, it's about God's glory being manifested. And part of our, His glory being manifested is we have to allow ourselves to be positioned to encounter that. So you can sit, you can close your eyes, you want to stand. I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't. We're just going.
open eyes in the glory you begin to see when your eyes are shut you begin to hear when your ears have been shut in the glory yeah. in the glory all the oil stripped down me from your throne they make everything We come running, Father, with our arms wide open, open, open. Yeah. In the glory, yeah. in the glory. the worship team. Melissa's already. Thank you guys so much. Holy Spirit. He's so good. He's so good. This morning. Wow. Well. This morning the title of the message is going to be called God's Glory manifested. Yes. And you know, I, 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 whenever I used to hear the word manifested, I used to freak out. 
Because it was always associated with like demonic manifestations. But you know that uh, God's glory is manifested. God's glory is manifested. So I'm going to ask you guys a couple of questions, and I don't have to answer, you don't have to answer me. Just kind of with your own self, evaluate. So I'm going to ask you, what is coming out of you? What's coming out of you everywhere you go? When you're at Walmart, when you're at Kohl's and they got one, yeah, you know, I don't go to Kohl's because of that. What realm do you live out of? You know, we talk about the kingdom a lot here. This is a kingdom house. So what realm do you live out of? Most people will, hey, well, I've been a Christian all my life. I go to this church. I go to that church. It's not what I'm asking you. What realm do you live out of? Do you live in the natural realm? Are you functioning and flowing out of the glory realm? The glory. So we're going to talk about the glory today. You know, in this house, it's, it's real important. It's vital. And, and you'll hear me often talk about the four pillars. And I believe this to be true here in this house and as, as, a, as, a, as a, a, a foundational part. Because in order for us to know what God's glory is, to, to step into his glory, we must know these four truths about him, about the Father. Most people, I'll ask the question, well, who is God? Y'all have heard this before. It's going to be repeat, but that's okay. I'm going to keep saying this until we truly get it because nobody here but a lot of people online, okay? You're still not getting it. You see? If we know who God is, then everything we do is going to function and flow out of his nature and his character. What we do will look like him. What we say will sound like him. How we react will look like him. Who is God? God is love. His whole nature, everything about him. For God so loved the world. Ah, well, what about judgment? Yes, judgment. But his judgment is love. What about his wrath, brother? Yes, but it's also love. Everything about God is love. Who are you? It's pillar number two, right? We talk about this. Who are you? Oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm so-and-so. I'm apostle, prophet, I'm pastor. No, that's not what I'm asking. Who are you? You're a daughter. You're a son of the Most High. And once we understand who we are, and who he is, then we'll begin to function and operate as a son. A son doesn't worry about what the father has because he knows it belongs to him. And my children test me on that. And they're old already. Like, Dad, you preach about it all the time, so. I said, no, man. <laughs> Does it count on this? That's my chocolate milk. No. <laughs> but knowing who God is and knowing who we are. And then also knowing what we've been given. What have we been given? All of heaven. All of heaven. It says that the righteousness of, of Jesus is imputed inside of you and I. That the very facet of who Jesus is is imputed deep inside that we've been made right, that everything that comes out of us should be rivers of righteousness. I have a hard time. I mean, listen, for me, I, I struggle with this. For, I, listen, okay, be transparent. For a long time, my pastor would tell me this message, and I got so tired of it. Until one day I said, do you ever preach about anything else? I, I said it nicely, though. 
Because I already know my identity. See, that's something that we, we, we all struggle with sometimes, is our identity. I'm not asking how long you've been saved or where you go to church, but our identity in Christ. Because when we know who he is, we know who we are. And when we know who we are, we know what we've been given, all of heaven. And if we know what we've been given, the next one was, what are you doing with what you've been given? You know, true, true question. What are we doing with the inheritance that Jesus has given us? Are we just going to conferences? Are we out there laying hands, healing the sick and raising the dead? I mean, I, I have friends that have a, have a, a, a squad. They're called the DRT team. And they have business cards. And they go to the hospitals. And they give them to families. The DRT team, the dead raising team. And they say, when they die, would you call us first? So we, okay. <laughs> will you call us first? And an opportunity to raise the dead. To raise the dead. See, all these are parts of the glory. All of it is part of the glory. We must learn to become intentional with knowing who God is. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, I'll just use my wife as an example. I wouldn't marry my wife if I didn't know who she was. You know, you get it, you, you need to be intentional in this journey that you're having with the Lord. Spending time with the Father, getting in your word, in your prayer, in everything you need to be. We need to become intentional with the things of the Lord. So this morning what I want to do is I'm going to give you uh, uh, four tools that will help us seeing God's manifestation glory in our own lives. And I'm going to turn to Act 7. I hope I said this right, 755, but I might have not. So if not, I'm just going to read the scripture for you. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Number one, to seeing God manifesting in our lives is we have to look for the glory. Look for the glory. I say this often, a church alive is worth the drive. I was in Birmingham, no, I'm sorry, I was in Florence, Alabama. The Lord moved me to Florence in the middle of nowhere, kind of like here. I see a pattern happening here, God. <sighs> Moved me to Florence, Alabama, my whole family. And my spiritual appetite was so hungry for the glory and the, 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 the presence of God, but there was nothing there that could feed my spirit. Now, there was a lot of churches. I mean, it's a Bible Belt. A lot of churches, but I wasn't looking for church. I was looking for the presence the presence of the Lord. You got to look for the glory. I drove three hours from Florence, Alabama to Birmingham, Alabama every week with my family because I had to be in the glory. We got some people that do that here. We just want to be in the glory. You know, people will fly all the way to New York to have a certain kind of dish the rich and famous do that all the time. Let's, let's fly to France and go to this restaurant because they know the chef there. 
And the glory is so worth it. You got to look for the glory. You see in Acts 7 it says, being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed into the heavens. You know what gazing is? It's like, That's what gaze is. You're gazing on the beauty like, whoa. It says that they gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And then he says, look, I see the heavens opened. When you look for the glory, you see the heavens opened. But if you're not looking, you won't see. You see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. If we're not expecting to see the glory, chances are you won't. If you come into church, uh, had a hard week. God oh, just need to be in church and sit down. Worship's happening. You see people on the floor, people crying and like, what's the big, what's going on? Well, they're looking for the glory. And you're just expect not y'all, but people on the camera maybe. But we're just expecting something different. See, we can get really good at doing church. I did I did church for a lot of years. I did. I won't do that no more. Just like anything in the kingdom of God, it takes faith to see a manifestation of the glory of God. The glory of God is a vis it's a visible power. It's a visible power. In the Old Testament, the glory appeared as a cloud of smoke, right? Fire. We also know it as the Shekinah glory. We sing songs, Shekinah glory, come down. Y'all don't want me to hear me sing. We wait for you. No, 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 no. Shekinah glory, come down. The Hebrew word used for the glory in the Old Testament means heaviness or weight. Have you ever just walked in a place or been around other believers and you could feel the weighty glory of God? You're like, whoa, what is that? And it feels so thick. It's like it's like jello, but it's not heavy, like, but it is heavy, and it's like, ooh. I, I'm, this is true. As way I felt it, it may be different for everybody else, but it's like a, a glory, heaviness, a weightiness, an authority, an authority. It was used in everyday speech to express a person's worth, their material sense, and to express the importance and of greatness. Honor, splendor, power, and on and on. Glory was also a word, was, was, I was corrected on this, but it's the kabod, the kabod. The kabod, glory. The heavy glory. The glory is honor, it's abundance, it's riches, it's splendor, it's dignity. It's reputation. You know, in Exodus 33, you hear Moses crying out for something. And what does he say? Show me your face. Show me your glory. I want to see your glory, God. Can you imagine what Moses was going through? I mean, there's a lot happening there. But if I could just see your glory, 
I know that everything will be okay, God. One touch of your glory. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm all about the manifestations. And I know people may have a problem with this. And I'm sorry if you do, but I've seen the gold. I, I'm not, I, don't, I, don't, I don't glorify that stuff. I've seen the gold dust. I've seen all. The, praise God. If God wants to do diamonds, praise God. That's good. Whatever. But the Lord told me one time. He said, did you know that one spirit speck of my gold has enough power to raise the dead. That's the waning glory of the Lord. Because he's in the glory. It's who he is. And that's a manifestation of who he is hovering. It says in Genesis 1 that they hovered the earth. The Holy Spirit hovered the earth. The glory. He asked, show me the glory. He wasn't asking for like, show me how many this or, or, or like take me to the magic vault. No, he says, Lord, I just want to see your face. Everything we need, everything you need is wrapped up in the glory. You need breakthrough in your family? That's the glory. You need healing in your heart? Get in the glory. You need healing in your body? Get in the glory. I want to be in the glory. In the glory. I find rest. I find peace, God. I find joy, God. In the glory. That's where we got to be. Nowhere else. You'll see the greatness. You'll see his splendor. You'll see his majesty. You'll see his perfect holiness in the glory. And guess what? In the glory, that's how you'll see people around you. Even the person that hurt you and offended you, family members that have cursed you, written you off, you'll see them in that same glory. The glory of God upon your life will promote you, it'll make nations. Honor you. It'll celebrate you. It'll cause your greatest enemies to come and repent to you. I don't know about you, but I just want to be where the glory is at. The glory is here. As soon as we walked here, I felt the glory of the Lord. So good. Exodus 24, 17 says, uh, The sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring a devouring fire on the top of the mount. The nation Israel saw the glory, and God came down to meet them on Mount Sinai. The prophet Habakkuk got a glimpse of this fiery glory, and he describes it like the sun blazing in the sky. His brightness was light. He had horns or shafts coming out of his hand. And there was like a, it was like a, a hidden power, hiding of his power. God came from Taman, the Holy One of Mount Paran. This is going to be out of Habakkuk 3 4. Habakkuk 
3, 4. The Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah, His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of His praise. His brightness was like the light, and He had rays of flashing hands, flashing from His hands. And there His power was hidden. The same glory that raised Jesus it's inside of you and I. And you know, we know this, don't we? Do we, all, we all know this. In our mind, we know this. I used to have a good friend of mine that we would always get around and I say, hey, bro, man, I love you, man. And he would, well, then act like it. <laughs> we know, it was a joke we had. But it's so true. We all know the answer to this. The same Power, the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of you and I. So now we just got to act like it. What are you doing with what you've been given? Other nations are hungry for it. Number two, I believe this is important. How do we see the glory of God today? Like, how do we see it now? Like, number two, pray for the glory. Pray for the glory. Romans 8, 18 says, For I consider the sufferings of of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Pray. And when I read that this morning, I've read the scripture many times. But when I read that this morning, it just hit me. Like, whoa. Something deep with that scripture. So I'm going to read it. 818, for I consider that the sufferings of his present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. We have to pray for the revealing of his manifest glory. Pray for the revealing of his glory. Can you imagine? Just close your eyes. <laughs> Can you imagine just you're in a place and there's such a presence and a glory of the Lord that no matter what kind of sickness came in, instantly healed. They walk in with a wheelchair, you're like, Poof, just jump right out. They drive by the parking lot, and healing comes on their body. That's the glory of God that we're talking about. That's what I want to see. You know, we go from glory to glory. And I remember, that <laughs> I asked the Lord, Lord, I said, Lord, listen, I, 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 because I talk to the Father like this. He's my friend. I said, God, you said that I would see miracles. You said that. You said that I would see miracles, God. So, but God, I haven't seen nothing yet. This is me throwing a little tantrum with the Lord. <laughs> I said, yeah, praise God for the headaches. I like all that. And, you know, I even got, you know, I, when back in the day when everybody was like one leg growing, one leg and blow, and it would grow. I get it. I'm happy with that too. But I said, Lord, I want to see the creative miracles. 
And then he positioned us. See, what do we do? We position ourselves. We get positioned. A man dies. I said, God, this is my, this is it, right? <laughs> and I go to the back. God, you said. I would raise it. We would see the dead raised. I said, I'm pulling all of heaven down right now, God. What are we doing with what we've been given? He's a God of love. Who is God? Who are you? I'm a, you're a son and daughter. What have you been given? All authority in heaven. Now, what are you going to do with it? Raise the dead. Pray for the sick. Cast out devils. We pray for this man. Y'all know the story. Y'all have heard it before. The breath of God comes. The resurrection power comes. The dead man comes alive. <gasps> And then we go from glory to glory. So guess what? I want to see more. Lord, can we get a two for today? Can we get three of them next week? Man, I, I, got, I, I, I know people and friends that we travel with it. The Lord has used them. 83 dead raised. 125 people raised from the dead in the jungles. And I'm like, wow, God, you can do it. Hey, we all sing the song, right? Don't you tell me you can't do it. We sing the songs. We do, but we've got to believe. When Moses asked, and his, um, sorry, where are we at? You don't even want to see my notes. It's like an explosion. We're on number two, right? Yeah. Number two. So we pray for the glory of God. How do we pray? First, I pray that the glory of God will be revealed to you and in you. You can see and experience the glory of God. But you must diligently ask and seek for it to be revealed. When you pray the glory unto the earth, miracles, signs, and wonders will occur in the church and in your personal lives. How many of us have miracles happening in our personal lives right now? Come on. You don't have to answer that question. I just was... But if you're not seeing miracles and signs and wonders happening, you've got to ask the Lord to reveal that to you. Because where the glory of God is, those things are manifesting. It just happens. Why? Because it's the attributes of who the Father is. They just happen because He is that. Oh, Lord Jesus. You guys okay? Y'all are too quiet, man. I know, y'all just think about Italian food. <laughs> when we pray the glory into the earth, miracles and signs and wonders will occur everywhere we go, no matter what. When Moses saw the glory, he kept saying, please show me your glory. What happened? Oh, man, come on, people. Holy Ghost. He showed him something. Let me just read it, 33, 18. And he said, please show me your glory. And then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I'll have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Let me go back. When you look and you find, when you go in the glory of God, he says, I will make my goodness pass before you. How many of us like the goodness of the Lord? Lord, thank you for your glory. Mm. 
we got to pray Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. And it's this, that you would know the hope of his calling, which is the hope of his glory. Pray that you will understand the riches of his glory and his inheritance in the saints. When we inherited him, glory was deposited inside of us. But we have to receive the revelation of what that means to walk in the glory. There's such a... You can't just say what you want to say. You can't just do what you want to do and act how you want to act. If you are a carrier of the glory of God, everything you do has power and authority. What you say has authority. What did you see? So-and-so, brother so-and-so, or sister so-and-so? Yeah, well, I heard this. No, keep your mouth shut. Because what we say has authority. There's a weightiness on the glory. You and I are carriers of the glory of the Lord. We're carriers of the glory. Ephesians 1.17, um, I'm going to read it. That the glory of the Lord, Jesus Christ, Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him, the eyes of understanding being enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Who is God? Love. Who are you? A son, a daughter of the king. What have you been given? All of heaven. An inheritance. It says it right there, an inheritance of the saints. So number three, we have to prepare for the glory. Prepare for the glory. Romans 5.5, 5, now the hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. Our hearts have to be willing and ready to receive what the Father has to pour out. Man, Lord, you can go so many different directions with this. Thank you, Father. Did you know there's different degrees of the glory? But you won't be able to experience the different degrees of the glory if you don't prepare your heart to receive what the Holy Spirit is trying to pour out. Oh, brother, don't go to that church. They pray in tongues. I don't hear nobody interpreting. I'm like the fruits of the Spirit? What do you do? All things Jesus. Bam, come on. All things Jesus. You want to walk in the glory of God? But you limit God. Miracles happen. Oh, I need to see proof. See, we're not, we're not allowing the, our hearts, our, our spirit to be a vessel to be poured into. There's a lot of things that I see that I don't understand. And, of course, I let discernment speak to me. My spirit of the Lord, just, you know, all that is vital and key. But when I don't really understand it, but yet I don't really discern nothing evil of it, I just say, Lord, I don't understand that. But give me eyes to see and ears to hear because maybe he's just doing a new thing. 
Maybe he's just doing a new thing. I don't know why you healed that person the way that you healed them, God. I don't know why that man was resurrected. You, you allowed us to pray, and he got resurrected, and then he died again in the ambulance, and then they had to use the paddles, and he came back to life. Why did you do that? I don't know. But we have to be willing to receive. Kind of like that person. <laughs> I do this a lot. My wife loves, she's like a connoisseur of different types of foods, and she's really risky. I'm like, I find something I like, I'll stick with it. Like, I never would touch sushi in my life. I say, you are disgusting. Oh, no, don't you knock it till you try it now. It's so good. The Holy Ghost, come on, come back, come on. Listen, but, but when you know something is so delicious and you try to explain and you get your spoon, just try it. Just, just try it. Try it. <laughs> like, no, no, no. And then you get all mad. No. Right? That's me. I'm the no guy. And this is Alice. No. You. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not God, forgive me for I have lied. I'm just kidding. Okay. I know, but at heresyhunters.com and all those people, you know. Did you hear that? I knew it. Holy Ghost. But in order for us to be able to receive the different degrees of the, the de degrees of the glory, we have to allow ourselves to be willing to receive it. You know, I would never wear a shirt that has flowers and berries on it. If it didn't say Harley, I wasn't wearing it. Serious? Look, this is me being transparent. And some of y'all know me enough to say, yeah. But it, it's like, okay, they got me a shirt that has bare arms. All right, I'm going to get And then I got compliments on the shirt. I said, all right, maybe I need to get some more berries, and I don't know. Because I didn't get no compliments on my Harley. Except from bikers, you know. Anyways. <laughs> If we want to experience the fullness of God, we have to position ourselves to experience the fullness of God. That means if you know there's something happening on a Friday night and you hear that miracles are happening or God is moving, it's okay to position yourself. Say, you know, I don't know what it's all about, God. I may not understand why they're on the floor laughing or they, I don't get it. But, God, I just want to be where you're at. And guess what? He meets us where we're at. And whoever's doing things that they shouldn't do, they're going to have to deal with God. Not with us. So, how do we do that? <laughs> By walking in love. Who is God? He is love. It takes faith to receive and to operate in the glory. And faith works by love. Galatians 5 says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. That means that the glory of God will increase in you and direct you and guide you on how to, walk, how to walk in love. So to increase the amount of glory in our lives, you must learn how to walk in love. More love, more glory. Simple, but hard. 
Because sometimes our love meter, right? We got a love meter. Like somebody to come around, beep, 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 oh, I love them. And then somebody comes, negative. God, forgive me again, Lord. But I'm just being transparent. Listen, sometimes we come around people that you just know they, they hate your guts, but they're just, oh, I just love you. But listen, I, I, in my walk, in my journey, I, I praise God. And, and I, I can honestly say this with all my heart, that the Lord has given me this love tank that I don't understand it. I just, well, I'm sorry you don't like me no more, but I really, I do love you. Because I mean that from my heart. So love, love, love more, more glory. Simple. We need to make that a t-shirt. More love, more glory. For God so loved the world. Yeah. The spirit of strife is always looking for division. It's looking for an opening, a way to get in your life. Never let your love guard down. If we keep our love walk up, you're going to see the glory of the Lord just rest upon us. So, number four, and I'm almost done. Promise. Walk in the glory. You become what you behold. I remember parents say that. They used to tell us that. Don't hang out with that crowd. Or you're going to, people see you with that crowd. They're going to think you're part of that crowd and you're like, no, mom. You don't like, no. It's true. If you hang out with thugs, they're going to think you're a thug. You hang out with the hallelujahs, <laughs> you're going to think you're a hallelujah. I'm a Jesus freak. I'm okay. I like to hang out with Jesus freaks. You become what you behold. And what you behold, you begin to manifest. So if you're in the glory, you become the glory, and everywhere you go, the glory comes out of you. Peter's shadow healed the sick. How many of you guys would freak out? I'm just gonna just, just gonna put it out there. If we lined everybody up right now, everybody was sick. And I said, shut the lights down and give me a flashlight, and I'm going to walk past you. And as I walk past you, the shadow is going to come and it's going to heal you. How many would have a problem with that? See, a lot of people would. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Peter's shadow healed the sick. The glory of the Lord was upon him that everywhere he went, glory oozed out of him. Even the shadow, there was an overflow that even his shadow got obese with the glory. Can you imagine? Lord, make me skinnier and my shadow obese with the glory, God. <laughs> Hey, transparency brings breakthrough. Come on. I will minister my weakness, Lord. I will. Hey, but you know, I lost 11 pounds. Oh, that's good. And more to come, Jesus. So, Holy Ghost, walk in the glory. Second Corinthians 3.18 says, Be we all with unveiled faces, beholding as a mirror in the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. We go from glory to glory. When you live in the Spirit, you look like glory. And the glory comes out of you. 
Come on, Lord. The glory of God looks for a dwelling place. See, the original house for the glory, remember, they, it was a tabernacle. They would go, they, it was inside the tabernacle. But under the new covenant, Holy Spirit, we are the temple. And the glory of God wants to dwell in its habitation. He wants to build a temple in every believer. 1 Corinthians uh, 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? That's some good news, man. Oh. So if he's in you, what's coming out of you, right? It should be glory, glory to glory. Yes, Jesus. We are God's house, his temple. But we are no longer in a fixed location. We are walking and talking and preaching the gospel and the good news of Jesus everywhere you go. Talking about the glory, sharing the glory. Today, today the message was God's glory manifested. Every one of you is God's glory manifested everywhere you go. Everywhere we go. You see, in Acts 2, Says all of a sudden, right? Something happened. The Spirit of the Lord came in. All of a sudden, there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. Fire and tongues and happened. And then what happened after that? They all went out. They all went out. They preached the gospel. And they worked signs, wonders, and miracles everywhere they went. So when the fire of God comes upon us, the glory, kabod, heavy, weightiness, glory of God rests upon you. You are so on fire that all you could do is go. There is a send. There is a go. And all you want to do is see heaven manifested everywhere you go. You know that when I see somebody who's in a cane or a wheelchair, my heart grieves if I don't pray for them. If I see somebody who's, who's sickly, and I just sit there and watch it happen while I'm eating at a restaurant table, it's like a stab in my heart. Because I'm put on this earth to release the glory. What are we doing with what we've been given? Oh, well, I go to church every so-and-so. And I clean the church on Tuesdays. we got to get hungry for more. Got to get hungry for more. When you walk in the glory of God, you have the fire of God that's in you, and the devil cannot withstand it. He cannot. We are to put on the whole armor of God, which includes the shoes of the glorious gospel of peace. There's a glory in your feet. There's glory in your feet, man. On purpose. So you can walk all over the devil's head. Jesus. All right. There's the glory in our feet. Isn't that why it says that, uh, uh, let me see here, I got a scripture for it. 
That's why uh, it's that the church is the devil's what? Footstool? Let's stand for me this morning. See, in Exodus 33, when Moses was asking um, God to show me your glory, what he was asking was to reveal everything that he is. He was asking God, show me who you are, because I want all of you. And I want that to be our cry this morning. That we would say, God, show me your glory. Because I want to know who you are. All of you, God. I want to know what you love. Holy Spirit have your way Father we thank you for the glory we thank you for the greater glory that we would never be the same God that even as we leave today God that there would be a glory that's upon us God that we would see people, the harvest, be drawn to. That everywhere we go, Lord, we would see the signs, the wonders, the miracles. But most importantly, God, that we would go and they would see your love. Lord, give us our love tanks. Help us to forgive those who curse us. Father, even now, Lord, I repent, God, of areas that I, I've fallen short, God. I repent, God. Father, I thank you, God, for the ladders that you extended down, for the invitation to the glory realms, God. Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the increase now. Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way.